Hey there fellow ice cream enthusiasts. I've had some of you request a video about how to create and balance an ice cream recipe using an ice cream calculator. So I'm going to give you a quick view of how at least I've been using calculators. One thing that I will state up front is that independent of whatever you might calculate, calculate I would say it the calculators are only predictive. Ultimately, until you actually make a recipe, uh, you won't really know exactly how it's gonna come out, either from like a flavor standpoint or a texture standpoint or freezing. So all of this stuff is really, really helpful for helping you just make great general predictions about what might happen uh, and help you maybe prevent some obvious errors or help you to debug a recipe. Um, but ultimately, like, as you probably know by now, the creation of any recipe is just going to take a lot of um, refinement. And having a stronger structural understanding of some of the elephant, uh, elements that go into creating an ice cream recipe and how you can use it a calculator will help you speed up that refinement time. So the ice cream calculator that I'm using today comes from icecreamcalc.com. This is open source software uh, and it's available for both Mac and PC. And I'll go through a light demonstration. If you want me to go through a longer de demonstration, just drop a note in the comments so I know. I'm trying to just make content that people find valuable. But at a high level here, any ice cream calculator is going to ultimately be the same. What we're trying to figure out, I'm adding my list of ingredients along the left-hand side here. Uh, each one of those ingredients, so say milk, for example, uh, has a certain amount of fat, sugars, milk solids, not fat, and any other solids and water content, and then PAC, uh, freezing point depression, and then POD, uh, how much relative sweetness that particular ingredient adds. So milk doesn't add all that much sweetness. Most of the sweetness I'm adding comes from my sugars, as is no surprise. But first thing, when I look here at this calculator, so what I would do, go ahead, I'd add in each ingredient. Um, most of the ingredients, like milk, cream, sugars, are already going to be in here at times. Maybe if you're adding in uh, Oreos or pumpkin puree or whatever it might be, this calculator in particular also has access to the um, USDA food database so I can go and I can add a particular recipe into the assortment. So after I've entered in my core ingredients here, and mostly I use this for calculating base, although I do also use it uh, first, I'm making a fruit flavor. How much water am I introducing? Uh, how much am I changing the freezing point? So bef right now, this is for a 10% base that I had been testing. You're going to see that some of these columns are in red. This is not actually accurate. Like, I mean, anything that's above 10% would be legally ice cream. You don't have to follow whether these are in red or green. They're trying to tell, tell me that I'm out of bounds. You don't really have to follow that um, if you understand what you're doing here. But uh, certainly for the fat at a minimum, uh, I was going for closer to a 10% butter fat, as you can see here. I'm at like 11.4, which also, again, totally fine. Uh, a number of other things that jump out and I like to take a look after finishing building my recipe uh, would be just at my POD, so what my sweetness level is. If you read the Underbelly blog, he always talks about liking to build a 110 to 120 base that gives you a lot of room to add some additional sweetness, and, and also just building an ice cream recipe that isn't too sweet, but uh, certainly nothing wrong with having a one. POD that's in the 150, 160s, if you like ice cream that's a little bit sweeter, or even 170s. You know, it's all it's all subjective. There is no right answer to this stuff. Uh, and then another thing that I'll check here is my PAC uh, total. So I want it to be between 220 and 230. Uh, you can, another way uh, would be to visually look at this is how hard or soft uh, is this ice cream going to be at particular uh, temperatures. And so as you know, it's, some ice creams can just be like way too hard, you have to wait for forever to get it out of the freezers. Others, like you put it in, maybe you added too much salt, or you're making an alcohol-based ice cream and it just didn't freeze, period. Um, so that's what this ice cream calculator is for, so I can add in uh, vodka as an ingredient, whatever it might be, so that I can get to this predictive range of here's how I can get within a general range of something that's going to freeze at a general level of sweetness and then at a general level of butter fat that I might be aiming for. Uh, in terms of these actual ingredients, you can feel free to go ahead and recreate this base. I made it. Um, I want to say that I ended up using this for a pistachio, which is one of the reasons um, that I probably brought the 
uh, 10% down, or maybe it was a fruit ice cream, whatever it was. I wanted the butter fat to be lower because I either wanted to leave room if it was pistachio for a ton of fats uh, from the nut that I was going to be adding. Um, and by the way, that is actually total fat. We can look at the butter fat. Is any different? Butter fat, 11%. Um, but anyway, I don't like really high butterfat ice creams, 14, 15%. I find it can be like a really greasy feel, unless like it's a super creamy flavor, like a cookies and cream or something, then it makes sense. But otherwise, I to reorient you for a moment and slow down, I have my list of ingredients here. So I use milk, cream, skim milk powder, soy lecithin for an eggless emulsification, uh, sugar, a balance between sugar and dextrose, um, and corn syrup solids or glucose. Um, or corn syrup, if you will, uh, to balance out my sugars. And I don't want to entirely rely on just plain cane sugar because they would just be too sweet typically. Uh, with dextrose, I get to reduce the freezing point, uh, but I don't have to add in quite as much sweetness level. I think it's like 0.6 or 0.7 as sweet as sugar. So here's my balance. A lot of this stuff has just been from personal refinement, reading other blogs like Underbelly or uh, spending time in our ice creamery and recreating the recipes that they've come up with. Um, but, and yeah, here's a uh, emulsifier mix that I went with. Uh, I'd say emulsifiers are like one of the, uh, or, or emulsifier stabilizers, like figuring out how much, how much guar gum, lobe bean, bean gum, carrageena, like getting the textural experience right is something that even after years of making ice cream takes me some time and refinement. But say for example that I wanted to adjust this recipe uh, or let's go ahead and actually add pistachio. So that is pistachio paste, which I don't want. So it's, I just want pure. Um, maybe let's do something more clean cut. Let's say that I'm adding in 55% dark chocolate here. And I want to go with a strong chocolate flavor. So I'm making fit 10, adding in 10%. We can see what that does uh, at 14% total fat. I think I'm okay. I don't think I'm going to butter out. In terms of what we did to my sweetness here, we certainly took it up quite a bit from 118 to 151. Um, but otherwise, I don't see anything else out of bounds. I'm looking at my total solids content. I look okay. Looking at the total water content, I look to be within ra uh, range. Definitely want to wash these. If you have too many solids, you're going to get more like kind of a crumbly texture, pasty. It's going to be like, super hard to scoop. Um, if you're too high up in water, then it's going to have more of just like an icy feel, kind of like dense popsicle or something. Um, but anything within these bounds will certainly be fine or even like at the periphery of them can still be fine. Um, so yeah, just as easily I added that ingredient in, I can remove it. Uh, the nice thing is that I can actually take, call this my 10% uh, base, I can save this as an ingredient within the platform. So say that I want to go create a second ingredient. We can save anything as an ingredient, ingredient, any kind of inclusion, if you're making a homemade jam, whatever it might be. Uh, so let's call this 10% base example. It calculated all the nutritional information for me, which is really nice. Um, historically speaking, like I used to do this stuff by hand, like when you go to the Penn State Ice Cream School, that's one of the things that they would have you do is calculate how much butter fat, teach you like the elements of how much butter fat do I have in it, how much sugar do I have, add up. Uh, each individual ingredient, break it down into its various fat, sugar, milk, solids, not fat, um, water, total solid component, how much freezing point suppression it adds, uh, and sum all of it. I used to, or I would do it in an Excel sheet. It's really, really nice to have a calculator uh, or a platform that's being continuously updated and maintained by the community instead. So as an example, and this feature, also really nice. So I have my 10% base example. And now if I want to build a recipe on top of that base, now I can go in and say, what do they have as a, uh, maybe I want to spin some strawberries into here. So as you can see, strawberries, 91% water. Of course, I'm adding in a ton of water content. So if I'm going for a really strong, maybe I'm, I need one 25% strawberry flavor to make it come through. I'm now below 10%, so I'm actually in gelato range, like whatever, I don't really care. You can see the water content's quite high. Um, my POD, it's, it's not quite as sweet because we added in so much water. So my first thought here is let's go ahead and add some 
additional sugar to see if we can balance this out a little bit. And then I would just sit here and play with this. So now, what a, uh, now I'm just too sweet or a lot sweeter than I'd like to be. Okay, now we're in like a reasonable range. We're a little bit hard on the texture. Let's see where the total freezing point is. 220 to 230, that's not too bad. Maybe a touch of salt in here if I wanted to um, help bring the flavors forward a little bit and then just make sure I uh, the scoopability will be okay. But uh, I'd be curious to see what this tasted like, to be honest. It is a little bit high in the water content. Uh, might have to increase the amount of emulsifiers or stabilizers, but uh, again, this would be one of the things like I, I'm not 100% sure what would happen until really going out and just spinning it. Would it be enough to make the strawberry come, flavor come through? Would you need more strawberry, less strawberry? Um, uh, maybe instead of using sugar, we can mix in some dextrose so we can up our solid content a little bit. Let's see if, let's try that. So let's take down, let's add in some, what other? Let's add in a little bit of dextrose here. Okay, so we're getting closer. I uh, could probably still add in a little bit of milk solids, not fat as well to bring down that water content, but we're starting to get pretty close. You know, it, it would definitely be one of those things where I really have, I, I could probably go and make this and see what happens and then continue to play with it and refine it from there. Do I need more solids or not? That I need more or less strawberry? You know, I'm, I'm personally of the view that when you're making fruit-based flavors that you need to have lower butter fat um, to really make the flavor come through. Otherwise, swirl in the fruit flavor as a jam um, on top or, or do some combination of both. Otherwise, like I, I think fruit tends to come much better through like sorbet or something. But anyway, if this video was helpful, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Happy to go into more details. Feel free to ask me questions. I'm not, um, you know, I don't get too overwhelmed with this screen. At the end of the day, like, you're just trying to figure out how much fat was there, how much freezing point depressant there was, uh, did I have enough uh, solids, uh, or is it too watery, or vice versa. Um, and there's probably five different things that I would say to really look for uh, as you just continue to play around, refine your recipes, and then evolve them from that. And uh, yeah, other than that, good luck churning.